hey people welcome back to another video how are you all doing i hope you are keeping safe i hope you are all doing well please continue to stay safe wherever you are this is very very important and how has it been with you generally how is life let me know in the comment section how are you doing <laughs> i'm doing great over here thank god <laughs> so in today's video as you can see from the title of the video i'll be answering questions on cost of living here in canada in context of Kitchener Waterloo. Yeah, I've been asked questions on oh, can I survive on minimum wage? How much is the minimum wage in Ontario? And questions like oh, can I come to Canada alone? Can I come to Canada with my children and my partner can join later? Questions like this troubling people that are about to land in Canada or people that are looking at Canada immigration. This is what I will be answering in today's video. You know, family related questions. I'll also be sharing my cost of living as well here in Canada and I've also been asked questions about what are the monthly bills that we pay in Canada so if, if these are questions you are looking to be answered or that you want answered to watch this video to the end and I may be looking down from time to time um, I have my husband's input so I have it all on my tab my Samsung tab <laughs> This is not sponsored by Samsung. I'm just a fan of Samsung. Yeah, I have input from my husband. So there are some bills that you don't even know anything about car insurance and all of that. I don't know this and um, gas. So I have it all written down. But before I go into this video, if you are coming across my channel for the first time, if you are seeing this face for the first time and you've not subscribed, why? Please subscribe for everything Canada Living. I share with you live here in Canada. I share with you business ideas ways I save money and all the interesting stuff is what I get to share on this channel. So subscribe, hit the notification bell so that when I upload new videos, you will always come back to watch my videos. And to all my OGs, thank you for always rocking with me on this channel. You are the best. And to all new subscribers, yes, I, I see that there's an increase in my numbers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you for joining this channel <laughs> let's go right into the video so talking about cost of living in canada it is relative because um it's dependent on the province the city your lifestyle so these are things you need to consider when we are talking about cost of living in canada it's not generic it's not one car fits all that's number one that you need to put out there and i'll be talking specifically from what we spend here in Kitchener Waterloo. Kitchener Waterloo is quite big. It's a university city. We have two universities here in Kitchener Waterloo. We have the University of Waterloo and the Wilfred Laurier University. Um, Kitchener is a host to many um, big companies. We have Google, we have Shopify, we have um, Blackberry. These are big companies in Canada and it's also a home to Conestoga College. Yeah, this is one of the colleges that international students come to quite often. So um, just put that in perspective when we get to talk about the bills here in Kitchener Waterloo. And Kitchener Waterloo is about one hour, 20 minutes, or one, one hour, 30 minutes away from Toronto. And Toronto is the capital of the province of Ontario. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Yeah, so just put this in perspective when I get to talk about the bills that we pay here in Kitchener Waterloo. Yeah, in the province of Ontario, the minimum wage was just increased in January, is now $15. It used to be about $14.25. That's the minimum wage. And start sharing the bills that we pay. I will leave you to decide if it's okay for you to move with your kids without your partner. And um, another thing that I need to say is if you are moving to Canada with your kids without your partner, this should not be a long-term thing. You should have a plan of your partner joining you in the shortest time that you can think. Yeah. If you are looking at moving to Canada with just your kids, then um, you should have it as a short-time plan. Yeah. So your, your partner should plan to join you soon. Okay? So... I would not advise that moving to Canada without your partner, with just your kids, it's settling down can be a bit burdensome. But if you build the right um, community around you, um, the right network around you, you might find it easy. But then, without mind saying what, it is not easy. Okay. Another question is the 
Canadian currency. It is different from USD. Canadian dollars is different from American dollar. I get asked this question as well. We spend USD in Canada. No, we spend CAD, CAD, Canadian dollar. That's what we spend here in Canada. Another thing I want to talk about is working hours and wages. Here in Canada, most organizations pay bi-weekly. So that means every two, two weeks you get paid for the hours you work. And the weekly hours is 40 hours. You could work more, you could work less if you are not a student. For students, they have regulated hours. Working full time, you can work 40 hours or more or less. So that's um, one thing you need to know. And the minimum wage, like I said earlier, is $15. Of course, you can earn more. You don't have to, uh, it depends on the organization, but that's just the minimum wage. And um, hours is 40 hours. You get paid by weekly. That means you get paid twice a month. So some organizations still do monthly payments, but then most organizations, please mark my words, most organizations pay by weekly. Most workers, and their salaries or their wages twice a month <laughs> every two weeks so um yeah that's that's that the bills that i'll be talking about in today's video are monthly bills bills are paid in canada monthly <laughs> so you pay your bills monthly and when due you pay your bills monthly and the dollars i'll be referring to are canadian dollars as well let me just say this about working you could work extra hours maybe a side also side gig freelancing even if you have a full-time job this is allowed the, the most important thing is for you to declare all your sources of income even if it is outside of canada when you are filing your tax return it should all be stated in your tax return all your sources of income this is very very important is because if not <laughs> you're playing with some fines or some penalties yeah so that's one thing i should say about that so so now let us itemize the bills that we get to pay monthly my personal bills is what i'll be sharing my cost of living um it's just me and my husband so it's a small family of two and we live in a two-bedroom house number one bill that it's important is the rent oh my god Right now, what we pay for our rent for a two-bedroom house is one thousand four hundred. No bills included, just the rent. And this is one thing you need to ask when you are um, talking about the rent. What bills are included in the rent? What bills are not included? You know, just have it straightened out right from when you are signing your lease agreement or your your tenancy. Right now, in the city of Kitchener Waterloo, a two-bedroom um, apartment condo. Um, house on the average is about 1700 canadian dollars to 2500 canadian dollars yes it is so high now and to be realistic the cost of living it's a bit on the high side now so as you can see from kijiji um, this is kijiji showing you and we are planning to land in canada soon and you want to do search for accommodation before landing just go to kijiji.ca this is not a sponsored video do a filter check as you can see i'm paying now how many bathrooms how many rooms do you want these are things you need to filter check and it will bring you the prices that are available the houses that are available and that's just a guide for you if you are doing an accommodation search from your own country before landing in canada and it states all the requirements all you need to present in kitchener the rent is high and for the high rent you can look into neighboring towns around the city for instance here in kitchener waterloo we have smaller towns like breslau Baden, stratford number one on my list is the rent and for me my rent of a two bedroom is 1004 as you can see there is a high rate of inflation all over the world and canada is not exempted from this inflation then number two is utility bill for my small family our utility bill it's about 80 dollars to 100 dollars monthly and utility includes hydro that is electricity water gas these are utilities that are that i'm talking about now the monthly utility bill it's not stable it could go up it could go high depending on the season especially during winter where you have to eat up the whole house it's a bit expensive during winter the utility bill is subject to usage it's subject to your service provider and your family um number if you have a large family you definitely consume more water um, more gas 
more electricity because you have more room for me for my family our utility is between 80 to 100 monthly so i would say on the average it's five dollars if you follow me on instagram I, there was one post that i did some time ago about hydro bills in ontario i want to reduce your hydro bill that's your electricity bill like i do my laundry off peak period because off peak period it's between 7 p.m in the evening to about 7 a.m in the morning and weekends it's off peak as well so i do my laundry drain off peak period that's weekends and i don't do my laundry every weekend i do every other weekend yeah so that's another thing about utility and how to reduce your utility bill number three on my list is insurance yes insurance car insurance house insurance yes you are expected to insure your equipment in the house and for the car insurance as well so there's a whole lot of information about car insurance if you're a newcomer to canada if you stay in a city that's prone to accidents your car insurance will be high and it's if you're a newcomer it reduces as you as you stay on in the province or in canada for car insurance and house insurance what we pay is 350 dollars we have both with one insurance company so it's 350 and insurance also depends on the type of car you are driving and it depends on the city if you are in the greater toronto area the car insurance there is huge <laughs> yeah you can pay like 200 or 300 dollars more than what we pay here in kitchener waterloo like i said car insurance is dependent on the type of car your driving history if you and if you don't have any accidents if you don't have any traffic um offense ticket another factor that determines what you pay on your car insurance is the class of your license if you have a g2 or a full g this is also one of the things that the insurance company considers uh, these are what determines what your car insurance will be monthly all right so that's one thing about insurance then home internet for our own internet it used to be 120 dollars we had to remove the cable and i think the home phone because we really did not get to use these services we started with a two years contract with bell bell is one of the expensive service provider that we have here in um, canada this video is not sponsored by bell <laughs> after removing the tv and cable and the home phone it came down to $80 for so for the home internet it's high speed it's unlimited usage and um, unlimited devices so it's $80 I'm sure someone will say oh you can get it cheaper you can get it less but then if you're new to Canada please shop around these are services that are competitive so you need to shop around for the best rate and you can strike a deal with service providers and they have packages for newcomers as well so don't just say because i said i'll use bell so you want to go for bell no you can still have um something better something cheaper and more affordable okay then number five phone bill uh, phone bill is 130 dollars it was a bit higher than that but um when i signed up i had two years contract uh, we both had two years contract each and we got a new phone so when the two-year contract expired i did not go for the latest devices so i did not upgrade so that reduced um what we had to pay so that's for the phone it's 130 and it's because we have the phone plan and it has unlimited data usage number six for when i talk about four yeah i talk about gas <laughs> like you know in nigeria we call it for so for gas um monthly gas i work from home and my husband drives i think about 17 kilometers to and from work daily so like eight kilometer in the morning eight kilometer back from so on the average from his information <laughs> um previously so um, all these bills i'm talking about are the current 2022 bill like the prevailing rates now because everything has gone high previously you, you could fill the tank of a toyota with 40 dollars but right now it's between 60 dollars to 80 dollars or even more it's subject to um, where you buy your fuel from or where you where you fill your gas from you spend about 150 to 200 dollars monthly so that's on gas your gas for the car <laughs> number seven which is more like what people ask questions about grocery what is the cost of your monthly grocery shopping oh so I'll, I'll break this down in two ways um 
because they are Africans, we eat African food, and you know, buying African food can be a bit expensive. I've done um, quite a number of videos sharing on how I reduce my grocery cost. I do bulk purchase, I buy from Costco, I, I go to a farm to buy goat meat, cow meat, um, tripe. So I share with friends, these are ways I reduce the cost on my grocery shopping but i use my pc optimum app really to save cost on these uh, items as well so on the average what i what i spend on grocery shopping monthly is between 350 to 450 and this is because we eat a lot of fruits and veggies and you know fruits and veggies can be expensive but there are some months that we spend more like additional 1500 or 1600 more from the prevailing price those are months where we buy a old goat meat a box of tripe and um cow meat so with this i buy this in the farm every two to two months every two to three months i would say when i do my bulk purchase at costco um buy in the farm it goes to about 1007 yes <laughs> and buy a bulk of african stuff i've done series of videos about how i save on grocery shopping i'll put a link of those videos in the description box of this video <laughs> that's a mouthful number eight monthly subscription that's subscription for netflix subscription for amazon prime these are the two major subscription my subscription is about 35 dollars so it depends on if you have kids there are some things that we subscribe to for kids so that can be a, um, an addition to your subscription <laughs> yeah so that's it then lastly miscellaneous and this miscellaneous spending or that i put aside is for when we eat out with friends when we do some um, fun activities or when some spontaneous shopping on clothing shoes comes up so for the miscellaneous and sometimes you get to pay for parking as well so for the miscellaneous it's about 600 to 800 dollars monthly because sometimes you just want to order food you just want to go out and you know going out here in canada you pay for this so that's what comes under the miscellaneous spending for my family so i just go out to, into a store and you see a nice clothes that you want to own and yeah why not buy it <laughs> so this is my bill and these are the bills that we get to pay monthly then if you have children just to put this in if you have children you think of daycare you think of a um, nanny these are other expenses that you can put in and from this list i can say you cannot do it it can be a list that one person would handle no it cannot be a list that one person would handle as a family you have to work together and students as well get someone to pair up with um, there might be more bills that students handle I'm not a student so. uh, well i can make this happen for students as well let me know in the comment section if you are coming in as a student and you want to have an idea of what you get to pay what bills i can bring in some of my student friend and we'll talk about this so let me know in the comment section but this is for a for a family coming into canada just for you to have the idea of what you would have to pay as a family so now let's do the total roundup of what my family spend monthly for, for, for our rent, $1,400, that's $1,400. For our utility, is $85. Insurance, that's car and home insurance, that's $350. Home internet is $80. Our phone bill is $130. And for the gas, is $200. Yeah. Then grocery monthly for me, for my small family, is $350. So on that that's monthly 350 dollars and those are just fruits and veggies that's what i buy mostly when i do my monthly grocery shopping and for the grocery shopping every two to three months there's an additional 1700 that goes into bulk purchase of african food goat meat um costco shopping yeah so and miscellaneous um spending let me put that on the average at seven hundred dollars so i would say for my family of two monthly we spend three thousand two hundred and forty five dollars let me round it up to three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars this is what we spend monthly and on some months um 
like the every two to three months that i said we spend four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars um very soon i'll be doing a book purchase i'll be shopping um like a book shopping for my african food stuff um uh, visiting the farm buying the cow meat the goat meat the tribe that i, I mentioned here in this video so let me know in the comment section if you want this video so that i know if it's something you want me to show you uh, or send me a dm if you want that video um to come up on the channel so i'm just putting it out here before, <laughs> before i wipe up my phone when i'm on that trip <laughs> so that i know if i should save the energy or not <laughs> So put this in the comment section if you want me to make a video when i'm doing that and please um i have to restate this this is a cost of living in kitchener waterloo in other cities it could be more it could be i in kitchener waterloo for a small family of two adults yeah so if you have um larger family you would definitely be spending more and i think the bulk of it goes to rent and grocery where we have to do the bulk purchase so now the question of can you live on minimum wage yes you can on it depends on your lifestyle and it's not something you can do alone especially if you have a big family it's the canada is not a place for oh husband <laughs> husband spend alone wife spend alone you have to bring your resources together if, if you are buying in bulk you can split with friends and, and for students as well you can share and split with friends i have a previous video that i've shared on students living and student accommodation i'll put a link to this video right in the description box of this um video i hope you find this video helpful if you have any more questions about cost of living in canada that you think i've not um touched on in this video please put it in the comment section and please drop any more questions that you have about living in canada live here in canada write in the comment section if you live outside of ontario if you live outside of kitchener waterloo you can share with us what cost of living is like in your city please put it in the comment section i'm sure it will be helpful to someone it will help someone decide on the town or the city they want to settle down in when they arrive in canada right in the description box of this video i will leave all the helpful links of the videos that i've done previously about how i save here in canada thank you so much until i come again some other time let's continue to impact world knowledge and information bye now see you in the next one